Hello, Jim Benson here from Modus Cooperandi and Personal Kanban with another Personal Kanban short. Uh, this one on having multiple value streams. So another anti-pattern that I've noticed recently is that people are getting one value stream, you know, drawing their Personal Kanban in a certain way, and then they're becoming convinced that that is their value stream. So they don't change it when conditions change. They don't use different value streams when different work uh, demands it. So today, take a look, a look at this uh, system. So say that, say that Mozart owns a record store and that he has a personal Kanban, it has his ready, doing, done, you know, value stream in it. And in that are all of his tasks. But he has tons of tasks that are order this, order that, order this, order that, find out where this is, find out where that is, you know, make sure that this is coming, uh, and so on and so forth. So a lot of his value stream ends up being gummed up by these repeated tasks around ordering stuff. So he says, you know, what if I set up a second Kanban that just tracked my orders? And I set it up very simply to show the different states that each order is in. So uh, one day he goes to his personal Kanban and it says, order stuff. You know, today's your ordering day, go order stuff. So he pulls the ticket over into doing, and then he calls up uh, this and says, okay, what do I need to order? And he takes a look here and he sees that he needs to order several things. He says, well, um, can't really afford to order all these things right now, so I'm going to just take the highest value ones, uh, the um, Buddha machines, the new Farmer Glitch album, and the Computo plush toys. So he sends off orders for those. Uh, the next morning, you know, right away, the people from China write and say, okay, we've well, got your order for the Buddha machines, and we're going to ship it to you immediately. Um, but uh, hold on, and we'll send you a, a note. And later on that day, they do send him the note and say, we have shipped, so he moves it over to shipped. Then the next day, he gets a confirmation that the Computo plush toys are shipped and that the Farmer Glitch uh, albums are right along the way. So... He hasn't actually been doing things to move things along this Kanban. He's not, um, he's not completing specific tasks to move things along. What we're tracking here is these items of value and where they are in the process. So he receives his, um, his Buddha machines and he moves them over to received. He, you know, oops. Maybe they didn't come. Um, he receives the plush toys. You know, he receives, um, or he knows that they've shipped. He knows that the Farmer Glitch CDs are shipped, and and off they go. And then let's say that he has uh, a little bit more time, so he begins to order a couple of other things. He orders this, and it moves along. Ends up ordering this, and it moves along, and this gets stuck. So now that this is stuck, and he can see that it's been stuck there for several days, now he can act on that. You know, so this now becomes a task. So in his task list on his regular personal Kanban, it will say, find out why I haven't received a message from the Simplexity people. So uh, that's it. Basically, the only, the only real message here is that your value stream changes uh, with the work that you're doing and that, you're, um, that pushing everything into the same value stream over time may end up doing more harm than good. So as you're looking at your tasks, as you're evaluating your work, also evaluate your value stream so that you know that you're using the right one at the right time and that it's helping you figure out you know, where you're actually doing a good job. So that's it for me and uh, most cooperandi for another PK short. This is Jim Benson saying see you next time.